hello everybody. Thanks for coming to my talk. I'm Miro. I work uh, as a senior principal quality engineer at that, even though like I'm now a full stack developer testing farm, so QE is just a part of it. We are also doing all the stuff from SRE to development, and we are also testing our stuff. So yeah, welcome. Um, yeah, small agenda, like what we will be speaking uh, today about. So I will guide you about the introduction of everybody maybe knows. Uh, this is what is testing farm. I will also tell you what is TMT and why it is important, uh, why testing farm and TMT together are important for this talk. Uh, I'm going to go through the testing farm request anatomy. It's just from some introduction. I think there might be people who don't know this stuff, so uh, I think it's always important. And I will dive into some interesting features that I think they are interesting. And we will look at some use cases where testing farm is being used. That's uh, on GitHub, GitLab, Fedora CI, CentOS Stream CI, and how you can use it also uh, otherwise. I will show you some future plans, and I hope because the content is packed, but I speak fast. So, uh, uh, yeah. A and uh, I will do a demo, but the demo is taking a little bit of time, so I will do some questions with it, and I think we will do it. So, what is Testing Farm? Testing Farm is an open source testing system as a service, or our code is actually open, or our infrastructure code is open, even though like, it's not super well contributable, but we are working on it sooner or later. It will be that way, uh, but it's like people contributed even from outside uh, Red Hat. Uh, so it's basically a flavor of software as a service, and we are focusing on executing automated tests. And we are running this automated test against uh, mostly VMs, so bare metal machines, but also containers. And we are really uh, back end of CI systems. If you think about it either, uh, like from the high level, that's what we do. CI systems calls us, call us to do the dirty work, provision the infrastructure, run the tests, and return back results. Uh, testing farm itself is being used quite a lot. We are also this disease is a bad word, <laughs> like something that is on a lot of places in uh, some of the rel infrastructure, but also we are in Fedora infrastructure, CentOS stream infrastructure, GitHub, GitLab. So we are on a lot of places. We are doing the same job there, running tests. Uh, we are doing it in hybrid cloud. That's important because we have one single public API that is being used by everybody, but we have a worker deployment uh, in Red Hat and one in public. So we are running tests also inside Red Hat, uh, but also for the public stuff. Uh, this single public HTTP endpoint is important. We wanted to be really open source, and we didn't want to have multiple HTTP endpoints. We want to have one really and sort out all the problems that come with it. Uh, it's reachable here. If you go to this link, actually, that leads you to our documentation. And you can look how it looks like. It's fairly easy. It's still 0.1 version. We are slow, but. Uh, it works well for three years currently for what we are in production. Um, our request to testing farm is really easy. You specify what you want to test, and you specify the environment on which you want those tests to be run. And testing farm returns you back results from the high level view. Uh, right? Um, that's the worker deployment that I was telling you about. Like we are, uh, the API is public public ranch, what is the worker deployment. We call that ranch because we are farm, so the worker deployment is ranch. Uh, that horse has nothing to do with anything, but I just I find it nice. Uh, so that public ranch runs everything I will be speaking today about. Red Hat Ranch is something for internal stuff and audience, because that is those tests are uh, running inside Red Hat Network and providing results only to Red Hat employees. But uh, I think it's half of half our requests. Half go to public ranch, half to Red Hat Ranch. Uh, as you can see, we support a lot of infrastructure. We are running a lot of containers, actually. Actually, majority of workloads is running against containers because we run some generic tests. But mostly we do AWS, also downstream, or I mean in Red Hat also, uh, also inside Red Hat network, but also uh, upstream. Uh, we have AWS actually that connected to the internal network. We do internally open stack, internally beaker. We have this nice new REST API, which you can connect any other provisioning uh, system very quickly. We have some Azure preview, and we are planning Google Cloud and IBM Cloud. But majority is this. This, this one is used just for one special device we are testing now on Q drive trees. Hope I can say that. <laughs> uh, so I will be speaking only for this part. This is about the talk is about. I will not speak about. Red Hat stuff, because I'm not sure if everybody is here a Red Hat employee. Yes, a lot of you are, but I will tell you that on QE Camp. <coughs> so what is TMT and why it's important? So TMT, uh, it's, it's my little bit word. 
maybe not everybody likes it, but uh, it's basically for me, it's an open source test management reimagined in Git. We did this in, uh, for RHEL because we had a lot of uh, legacy systems, or we still have, uh, inside Red Hat, and we wanted something modern that the, basically the folks who are working on RHEL can easily open source test to Fedora or CentOS stream, right? So they can share. And it was funny because the test could be executed on Fedora, but there was no infra actually running it. And also, there was no system which, where you could easily consume this test, something that would be nicely polished, uh, that you can share the test between Fedora and CentOS stream, combine them together, and so on. So that's why TMT was created. Uh, it's open source. There is already like 50, 60 people contributing to it. So it's getting larger. We have, uh, check it out. Uh, it can do for your project test management. I don't know if uh, like who of you works in QE, but there are test case management and test management systems, usually something that you pay for. This is in Git. You store some metadata in Git, and you can do test management in it. It's pretty cool. We like it. And then we are connecting with these systems like Polarion and TCMS, what are some internal deployments of test case management systems. So we are creating some export plugins. So we play nicely. But we love this, that we are working with tests and test metadata in Git because that's cool. That's what everybody does like correctly. I don't know. It's Git. You know, you can create a merge request again, your, your test cases. So that's cool. Just just this is Git, right? So that's the default. Um, otherwise, TMT is also a CLI tool and test execution, uh, uh, a test executor. That's where it relates to testing farm. Testing farm uses TMT to execute tests on their workers. Um, so this uh, test management, of course, we have a specification for it. So it's uh, in the specification, uh, uh, there are few attributes that I'll be speaking about, or few levels of, uh, of test, mm, test case metadata. Um, but like TMT is really focusing on that you don't re need your repeat yourself. So it has, it is basically kind of YAML format, but it's on some steroids. So you can uh, basically uh, store your metadata in a hierarchy. Uh, there is uh, some inheritance and stuff. So it makes it really easy that you can, uh, you can like have your test configuration. Test metadata, dry. Don't repeat yourself, right? Um, otherwise, if you go to some project which uses TMT, you install TMT from uh, whatever operating system are you using. Uh, if it's rel like, then install TMT. And you run TMT, it will discover and show you. So it's like really a, like we love it because it's like, uh, just looking at time. Um, you go to a repository and discover what tests are there in general, and you can have multiple unit frameworks, you can have multiple integration test frameworks, whatever, but we believe that TMT once will like, have this nice way how you can really discover this, all the tests that you have, uh, regardless unit test frameworks, whatnot. TMT is actually like, for me, it's a test framework agnostic. You can connect it with anything, really, even though like, it also can execute tests and like, has some preliminary support for some frameworks that we use in Red Hat, but People run PyTest, VI, Avocado. Uh, a lot of stuff can be run in any Ruby, JUnit, name it, Ginkgo, Ginkgo. <laughs> Sorry. I don't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so TMT has this. Uh, I, I'm not going to go to the details much here. I will tell you in the next slide why. So TMT has like four uh, levels of test metadata. One is like core attributes, which uh, like applies to all the other levels. And then there are tests, plans. Think about tests like one test case one that is like testing something. And then you have plans, what is like a collection of tests. And TMT where it shines it, that you can nicely select tests, uh, fine tune your test plans in a way that something only runs on CentOS stream, something only on Fedora, and something only on RHEL, and so on. So this, is, this, this comes from some use cases that we had in RHEL uh, that we needed uh, this, really the selection of the test is important. Uh, but you don't have to use it. You can just use TMT as a very stupid thing that runs one test. Whatever. Uh, stories, that's interesting. You can then link and create user stories in TMT. This is going a little bit beyond even test management, maybe going into the project management. But I find it useful that you can, uh, when you go to the TMT project, run TMT, look up the stories. You can check like which stories are covered by which code, which tests. So it's like interesting. Check it out. I don't have too much time. Tomorrow we have a workshop, so come there and try it out yourself. And better uh, here in the audience will do like more uh, we'll give you more information about this. I wanted to be really brief here because uh, we don't have time. So how does the testing farm request look like? What's the anatomy of it? So I said that this is like, really simple, right? So first you define tests. 
uh, you define tests by pointing testing form to a to a Git repo. Oh, that's too much. Right, so this is our API. We support actually two test types, TMT and STI, and uh, if you are using STI, then migrate to TMT, please. I will tell you later on why. Uh, and the TMT is the main format. We don't support anything else, but you can see here that the testing form can be actually agnostic. TMT is just like one execution of tests, like we were planning to add some random running of some script or whatnot, but it was not needed. TMT now can do all the stuff, but in theory, like we could run other, other larger frameworks and integrate it on various levels of testing form. So we have only TMT, you give it a Git URL, Git ref, because it's in Git, the test method is in Git, you point it to that Git, where it finds the test, and then we have some cool other features that are TMT specific, you can select as directly via API, you can say that filter me these tests, filter me these plans, these tests. Uh, you can change the, the TMT root directory, so the directory where TMT looks up its root. It's like something like Git, Git also has like .git somewhere, right? So TMT has also some file there where it denotes that this is the start of the metadata tree. It's usually in the same, in the same root as the Git repository, but you can change it. Um, nothing so much interesting here, right? So the test, and then you have, yeah, that's what I wanted to say, that we are planning to depreciate STI finally. Uh, and yeah, there will be a further change proposal, maybe a further 40, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. But I spoke with these folks who are running, working on this. We think that TMT now can replace STI fully. We are over uh, it, like functionality-wise. So we hope that get, get rid of it because we don't want to maintain two things doing the same thing. Why? There is no reason. We have better and then we can just like spend more time on have making TMT better. So. I'm asking you if, if you could slowly migrate, I would be glad. There is a nice migrate guide on TMT, it's linked here. Okay. So the environment specification, so testing farm like takes the tests and then it can run it on multiple environments. Think about running it on multiple architectures. In public we support x86, 64 and ARM. So you can run the same tests on two architectures. But it gets more complicated because each plan is run in a separate environment. So if you have 100 plans, then it all will run in a separate VM testing farm, then parallelize it. And I think for five, we are running now in parallel five on five VMs. And we are crunching all the plans and, of course, all the environments so it can get messy. Like people are running via us like hundreds of plans, thousands of tests. We are, if you run mile, million, then it will break. But <laughs> then we will have to fix it. Nobody just came. Like we had some people who are running really large stuff, but currently seems like it's okay. Um, so that's the environment. In environment, uh, you can specify a lot of stuff. So you can see it's an array of environments where you specify the architecture. As I said, look, you choose what operating system to run on via OS Compose. Then you have pool. Like one thing that I didn't mention, and I will be have it in the features. Like we are trying to abstract away you to knowing that you will run on specific infrastructure. You actually, like or our users, usually want certain amount of CPUs, memory, disk size, two disks, two NICs, TPM support, UFI support. Those are generic properties Then we abstract away from the users and we choose the infrastructure for you. Because maybe UFI is provided by Azure, but also AWS. So we will choose the infrastructure that we want. Uh, you don't care, you just want the property, right? But if you want really AWS, then with pool you can say it. Um, then as a good testing system, uh, you can pass environment variables to the test execution, any environment variable. But you can pass also secret environment variables, right? So something that we hide from you that can be useful if you need to deal with secrets, for example, uploading VM images to AWS or uh, uploading your container image to Quiet that you build via testing farm. So we can, we can, we can have secrets there, it's being used. Uh, one of the features that we had to implement is installing arbitrary artifacts before the tests run. So if you are testing a Koji build, most probably you want to install it before, right? To test the real thing. <coughs> so currently, like, that's, that's how it's done. You can ask for installing an array of Koji builds, copper builds, repositories, and repository file, adding a repository file to the environment. Just me at the time, I think it should be fine. Um, then you can specify the hardware, as I was talking about it, and then some other stuff. Uh, 
So that's roughly the test environment stuff. Uh, the environment can be influenced via this API, right? You say what you want. But also, some parts of the environment can come from the plan. So, for example, maybe in your plan you already know that you want to run against, uh, you want to, uh, your test, the test in this plan need 8 gigs to run well. So you can say that in the plan. You don't need to say that in the API, right? So this combination can be done. Then, yeah, as I mentioned, the test selection. So there is an adjust core attribute in PMT where you can really fine tune the execution for your test. So you run only the specific environment, something only runs on S390. It's a little bit an internal use case, but something only runs on ARM, something runs on x86. So we are ready. Like I think TMT is very good in it, in this test selection part. Testing farm then runs stuff. And if you are integrating with a service like Packet, we have a webhook mechanism. So basically, Packet is being, it, their API is being hit when we change the state from new to queued, running, complete, right? So they don't need to poll us, right? They are informed that something is changing, but otherwise you can poll the API, get the results. And if you are, maybe you don't even know that you are using testing farm, you just know because you get to some link like this and you can see that you are uh, hitting our, our results viewer, what has been contributed by cockpit team, thank you. Uh, really easy, nice. Like these are all plans. This is actually from TMT and you can see a lot of tests being run there. Uh, there is a nice reproducer. Did I mention that TMT is also a command line tool for local, uh, local debugging tests? If not, then I'm sorry, but uh, otherwise, like this reproducer, it looks a little bit larger now, it's a little bit older picture. Um, but you can just paste, you guys install TMT, paste this in your, uh, in your local host, and it should do mostly the similar thing as <laughs> CI does. It's not completely the same. We are on the path to making it the same. But it's uh, complicated because on your local host, you're probably not having AWS machines, right? You have uh, Liberty Yams and so on, right? So uh, then we have here some stuff about the environment preparation and installing the builds, right? We have some playbooks that run before the artifact installation, copper build installation, in this case, just copper build was installed. Post artifact installation, you can see here also some links to API request when you can look up the data details about the request. Uh, if something fails, then we, oh, I have time. If something fails, then it looks something like this. Uh, by default, we show only fail stuff because like when you come to a run, you usually want to see the, st the fail stuff because that's what's interesting, like past. That's cool, right? <laughs> Everything should pass. So we can show the past uh, plans here, but otherwise only show only fail, then you can look up like exactly in the log what failed, what you would expect from a testing system. Show me the failures, give me some reproducer and you need to sort out the details. When something errors out, we are trying to be reasonable. We are not always reasonable. Maybe once we will feed this into ChatGPT and it will explain to you what is wrong or we will fix the code so it's more reasonable. <coughs> so for example, in this case, basically you pointed testing form to a repo where there is no TMT metadata. So it looks like this, didn't find any plans. And it tries to give you a hint that run this command then in your repository and you will m most probably see that uh, something is not happening. There is some minus C here that some context, something that is being passed from the CI systems that is used in the adjust rules. So this, this context that is being passed, it's not, it's something that not, we do not auto detect, but for example, Fedora CI is passing us some details about what architecture is being testing, tested and, and, and distribution and what is the trigger in this commit, uh, and then you can adjust your test according to this context. So that's the test selection stuff. Okay, let's move on. So, like TMT, when you want to like try something on your uh, your local host, you don't need to care about testing farm at all. Install TMT, like uh, go clone repo or use TMT init command to play around with it. So TMT is really for these local use cases, local stuff. We also now have a testing farm CLI tool which will be used for onboarding and interacting with testing farm if you have yourself a token. Uh, but we will be blending somehow TMT and testing farm. In the future, we'll see. Uh, as I said, like testing farm already uses TMT. I'm also real TMT will use testing farm. It's a little bit like weird, but <laughs> it will work. Um, if you are an automated system, you are using most probably testing farm to run the test in scale. So, Packet uses testing farm to run tests against copper builds or without copper build installation, but run tests, Fedora CI, there is a Jenkins instance. I will be actually doing some details about this here. I will just move on. 
And yeah, so if you are a user, just use TMT. And once you get in the place you want to run this in CI, you will interact somehow with testing farm. Most probably you will not even need to know that they use testing farm because you will use some of our users like the CI systems that we interact with. Sometimes you don't even know that you are really using testing farm. You will see that if you see that Oculus viewer, the results viewer. So what features are there now in testing farm? This infrastructure agnostic hardware requirements that seems easy, but we have this beaker system inside Red Hat that has super variety of, uh, inf of infrastructure, like, diff like big, sorry, bare metal machines, I mean, uh, that have different network cards, different CPUs, and we want to get to this detail, right? So this is all fun, like public, but in, in, in reality, in real, like we have a system that is providing a super wide, uh, wide uh, inventory of bare metal machines, so that it gets funny, but we are trying to get it out as a infrastructure agnostic way so you can define it and you can say for example that I want only this CPU and we will choose that CPU for you. Maybe it's on AWS so we will choose AWS for you. So we can run multiple environments as I mentioned, uh, parallelization up to five uh, reproducer steps I showed you. We have a testing farm CLI tool that I have for demo. We can now request testing via it, restart some tests if you have the token of course. Uh, uh, run. Uh, run some arbitrary command on testing farm. Somebody asked me like, is Selenux enabled on CentOS Stream 9 in testing farm? And I told them like, then what should weep? If not, <laughs> so of course it is. Uh, but we test, with, uh, with this run command, somebody can just run testing farm run on CentOS Stream 9, se status, SE status, and he will see, right? So answering this simple question should be possible, so that's the run command. But we have now a reserve command, so you can reserve you as the community member, if you onboard to testing farm and give me, give me your public IP, like I will make it available to you. Uh, later on, it will be not needed, of course. We will add it automatically. <coughs> but it's here. That's, that's what I'm going to be uh, demoing today. What I'm really glad about that you can reserve a machine uh, according to hardware requirements and have fun uh, on it. We are not a funny service like some pet project. We have SLA, SLOs. We're doing DevOps stuff, monitoring stuff. We have SLO error rate less than 5%, API time more than 99%. Queue time, that's the new metric, so under one hour, but we are now under a few minutes. In public, actually, we have good infrastructure, so just that I'm not lying. <coughs> this is actually an internal dashboard. I'm sorry for it. We don't have it in public yet. So this is where we are keeping the SLOs, also with other teams who are running services inside Red Hat. And we will open source it somehow, definitely, uh, because the metrics are actually open source, but like Grafana is slow to load. Then we have these webhook notifications I mentioned. We can do secrets, variables in test execution. We can integrate with some internal, uh, internal uh, other instances that somehow deal with results. Actually, the report portal is coming to Fedora. That's a system for storing results. We'll integrate with it so you can have a history of testing results. Uh, testing form really has just this simple view. Uh, variables in TMT environment. I think I already had that there. Filtering plans. Did that load? Yeah, right. So the queue time is missing here. So this is for the last 28 days, like our error rate. Maybe I should slowly start opening the error budget mode. <laughs> because if we reach 5%, we drop in the error budget mode, we drop all work and just go fixing the stuff. Uh, but API uptime looks, I think that's even unreal. <laughs> Not sure why it's 100%, but it works like we have metrics and it's no uh, just some data. <laughs> But I was surprised. Seems like we are very stable in the last 28 days, at least for the API item. Uh, yeah, and the queue time currently, that's, uh, that's actually on public range. 14.2 seconds it takes until the testing farm from queued goes to running. Uh, here we are. We, don't, we need to sp spare money, so it's a little slower. Uh, we are still not doing the scaling well as we should. Um, okay. Five minutes, and then I will do the demo and questions. So. Uh, just, uh, yeah, the scale I said to you. We are running now 700,000 test requests a year. So it's like, clearly, like, all the large. There is stats testing for my, you can look it up. <laughs> and it's there. Uh, we, this is also shows, like, how we were growing, how we were growing, uh, how we were growing from the time then we got to production. Will it load? Oh, yeah. So 2020, we started 56,000 requests. 200 and we are slowly growing, maybe 700,000 this year, slowly, slowly but surely, as more people on board. Um, yeah, the, the main use cases of our service are, 
are uh, basically a public service, CI service using our API to run tests publicly. Then we have Red Hat CI systems who run tests um, and run it, or, or the results are available internally against internal infrastructure, but we have also from public to internal, this is quite locked down, but basically with testing farm, Red Hat teams can validate their merge request to GitHub against unreleased RHEL or any unreleased other product. I think that's cool because it was very hard to do before. It's locked down, it needs to be very safe uh, because like it's, uh, yeah, it's a weird scenario in these terms, but it's making sure that Red Hat employees can validate their products very early, shifting left as much possible. That's the big selling point for RHEL for uh, Red Hat employees, I believe. Uh, internally, Fedora CI packet, then we have some Zool integration, GitHub Actions, and the CLI tool, which you can use to interact with services. Only if you are using CLI or directly the HTTP API, you need a token, otherwise with this. Also with GitHub Actions, you need a token, otherwise with Fedora CI packet you, and Zool, you don't even need a token, like because the, the services take care of it. You just drop some files in, in Git repos. Yeah, not much time left, four minutes. I will do this very quickly. So Packet itself, uh, a GitHub application that can test your pull request. It can build a copper build, and we can validate that copper build installs in the system, and then we can run test against it. Easy as that, report back to pull, pull requests. Um, you can, I will just show a few links here because we don't have time. I was not so quick as I wanted today, so maybe that's good. Yeah, so here is packets running, and you can see that it's testing on a lot of, lot of all the versions. I think we support CentOS Stream 8, 9, Fedora, and it's running tests against that. This is actually directly TMT. TMT is, of course, like we are dog fooding as well. Um, then packet can also, also test only. You can skip the copper build. You can just drop some files into GitHub repo, enable packet, and it, you can run tests against that GitHub repo, whatever it is. You have a root, a VM, shoot yourself anywhere you can. So packet, easiest way to run test via testing farm, enable packet at TMT metadata to the Git, no testing farm token needed. GitHub, GitLab is a little bit harder to set up, but also it can do GitLab. Configure number of requests in packet, so packet can run multiple test jobs, those test jobs, multiple environments and multiple plans, so it can get large, but like it's possible. Uh, so so packet, you can have multiple jobs uh, and configure it differently. It has very good configurability because packet implemented a special field. They can they can patch our API, so you can do a lot of stuff with that. <coughs> and you can even run tests against internal infrastructure with packets, so if you are a Red Hat employee, it's really easy. Uh, no secret support, that's the only limitation that I would say packet is perfect, and I would just say like <laughs> that's all for GitHub, but no secrets. We, if there is a problem of sharing the GitHub secrets to packet, so we'll need to sort it out, most probably HashiCorp Vault, but it needs more time. Fedora CI is having a Jenkins instance that is reacting on Koji builds, and it's running tests and it uses webhook mechanism in Jenkins and the reporting results. And yeah, if you go to Bodhi, you will see some automated checks. Everything we start with Fedora CI, it's run via us. Uh, also, Fedora CI runs some generic tests via us, uh, installability, RP inspect, RPM deploy, those are some generic stuff, and they run even via containers. So because not every test needs a VM, right? If you don't need, we can run against containers. Zool is the next uh, CI system for testing these Git, merge uh, these Git PRs uh, on Pager. Uh, and we have it actually in two flavors. There is also, uh, it's also for CentOS stream, these Git contributions, but also Fedora, these Git stream contributions. There we integrate with Zool via a playbook. Once you have the HTTP API, you can integrate wherever you want, right? And we are providing the results. Zool is providing the results directly to the merge request. Maybe you know Zool, check it out. Um, yeah, very easy onboarding, but this is not configurable. This is not configurable so much as it should be, and I will go to the demo. Then we have a GitHub Actions workflow. You can read the, what are the benefits, but rather use packet. If you don't need secrets, with the GitHub Actions you can use secrets, and uh, if you really need to integrate because I write to hack or call API directly. You can use our HTTP API directly via HTTP or whatever, or you can use testing form CLI tool, and we have a, on Quio a small image. You can use also that. And in future, we will have multi-host tests and easy onboarding via Fedora and Red Hat single sign-on and more infrastructure <laughs> grow. More infrastructure because we are hungry, and now 
Yeah, onboard. If you want, there is onboarding guide and onboard. And now demo time. Yes. <laughs> so, I want to. This is like the newest thing. I wanted to show you. It's available if you if you are willing to share public IP with testing farm, then I can <laughs> make it available for you for that, and it will just work. Sorry, but it will take us a little bit more time to share the public IP <laughs> <laughs> automatically, so you don't need to know. But if you want early onboarding, let me know somewhere. You can find the contact in the last slide. So I want to reserve uh, what I want to reserve uh, uh, census stream. Oh, okay, I want just federal row height. I will just click it. Okay. Federal Rohide Intel architecture reserved for 30 minutes. And now I open for your questions until these three minutes, three and a half minutes, and I will get uh, root and I can do whatever you want. want. So that's my demo. Uh, reservations on testing farm. You can, if you have a token, you can reserve a machine and do investigation. This gets you the exact same environment as testing farm does. You might need to pass in some special parameters to make it the same as your testing farm, as your request was, but maybe we will adjust that it reads it out automatically so this was this is very cool i'm really happy about this i'm ready for questions yes please ask loudly and Miro, please repeat the question no 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 questions was it understandable <laughs> yes do you know how many federal packages need packets for testing and reuse um so the question is if i know like how many people use this for via packet I think Packet has a nice slide with th those large components, right? I can query the SQL database, but it will take a little bit of time. So after the, well, I'm, uh, like, we are testing, like, I don't know, hundreds of uh, Fedora packages, hundreds, like 900 was the last I checked. But with Packet, I will need to check. Is Pe somebody from Packet team here? Maybe they know. I don't see them. They didn't come. Why not? Um, so we will need to find out. I'm, we don't have good statistics for this, and we should have. But I can query database after that. So, no problem. Sorry. Any other question? Yes? Um, I'm not testing fan. It's not Fedora uh, with the Miro product package. I'm wondering uh, if I have a Mr. 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 Beckett testing fan. Uh, uh, is it a uh, requirement? Yeah. Uh, could I customize it by myself? Or I can ask the uh, uh, team help to customize it? Uh, is it a requirement? So, if you have some specific hardware requirements, you would like to, because we, we own the infrastructure. Uh, yes. I, I own AWS account, I do, I know Beaker. So you have a Beaker account or uh, AWS account or? Uh, yeah, so you'll get the testing on public cloud, like Fedora, AWS, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right, yeah, So maybe you need some <coughs> uh, customized some, yeah. Yes, I, I think it should be possible, like, we currently do only AWS and OpenStack, but it's internally. Uh, public, we do only AWS. So if we have accounts in testing farm, it's possible then to provision these other clouds. We have some Azure support, but other, others are not implemented. So if you need, for example, GCP, it needs to be implemented. So you can contribute, our code is open, or you can file us a Red Hat issue and uh, we'll try to get to it. Uh, it's, uh, we are all based on user requests. So if there are more users asking for GCP, we'll implement GCP. Then we are planning also to make it possible that you can uh, give your credentials somehow to us then we can use your credentials because that is needed for, for cloud costs or whatnot. But otherwise, like we are all running this on our uh, accounts currently. If that is not a problem, uh, internally we have cloud cost dashboard. I can tell that your team how many dollars it spent on AWS. So if that works for you. But I'm free to, have call, uh, free to speak after the, after the talk uh, and we can sort out the details. Any other questions? Was it digestible or not? I'm just asking. <laughs> cool. That's an improvement. <laughs> L last time I said that slow down the recording, if you, <laughs> if you cannot understand, so it was better. I promise it will go through. Just let's wait till four seconds. How much? I'm over time. Two seconds, three seconds. <laughs> now it's actually, now it's preparing the environment. I, we hacked it a little bit that uh, it shows the status. You will see that it was running setting up and now it's preparing the environment and now it, at the end should log in. It takes so much because our guest setup playbooks are slow uh, and they are uh, updating the whole system and they're rebooting it. Uh, so that's why it takes uh, longer. So maybe we, ah, oh, it works. Uh, and I wanted a normal machine, so I have just something, but I could provision a machine with 32 gigabytes of RAM, more disks, more disk size. But this works. If you want this, it's available on, we have actually this tool on PyPy. 
if you have a token, you can already use it. Just let me know somewhere uh, that we can meet together and I will need your public IP. <laughs> but next time I will steal it and <laughs> we will make the access to you because you need to somehow access the, this AWS resource. We cannot just open it for everybody because somebody in test, they set the password to Fedora, then a bot comes in and it will do something, right? So we need to make sure that this is safe. And in Red Hat, there is no problem because it's an internal network, so we are already VPN, so sorry. But if you want this, like, it's available, catch me. Thank you for your time.